Hi hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. Up first, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 2. This one went for a little bit over Derek's guess, selling for $45.80. The Toyota Corolla 11 did not sell, even though it was a bit up slightly over Derek's guess. That one got up to $13.10, but it wasn't enough for the seller to let it go. The Toyota Celica, or Celica depending on where you're from, SS3, sold for a little bit over Derek's guess. That one went for $800 even. Toyota AE86 was unsold with no bids. No love for the 86 this week. But someone got a steal on the Pajero Evo. That one sold for just $37.50. The Subaru Legacy Wagon 2.0 GT went for a little under Derek's guess. That one got picked up for $22.70. And the Ford Cobra, whether it was real or not, brought in a lot of money. That one sold for $60,950. The Toyota Land Cruiser 70 pickup got a lot of bids, but didn't sell because it was removed from auction. It was bid up to $26,350 and then pulled, so maybe the seller got an offer at their dealership or something. The Honda Civic RS went pretty cheaply. That one sold for $24,60. Finally, the Toyota Supra SZR did not sell. It was only bid up to $57,80, and I'm sure the seller wants a bit more than that for it. That's going to do it for last week's picks. Now here's Derek with this week's. Hey guys, it's Derek Weldon here, and it's time to look at auction picks in Japan. And I feel like I'm saying this every time that we do these videos, but I am under the weather again. It seems like when you have kids in preschool, in which I have two, the sickness just comes and comes and comes, and then it goes in a circle around your family. And in this time, this is my, I think, third time in this circle of friends, or circle of family sickness. Uh, I'm getting really tired of it, but you guys are going to have to put up with it because that's my voice for today. I actually had somebody post on a video recently. They were like, this guy has the most annoying voice. <laughs> And that was when I wasn't sick, and so I'm hoping maybe this uh, more baritone voice that I have while, while I'm sick actually appeals to that person. That's how I, I live my life, trying to appeal to people on YouTube that post random comments. Okay, so uh, we got 10 cars picked this time. We got some awesome picks this time. I had to narrow it down from 12 that I picked, and I still had more that I wanted to pick. Um, sorry for everyone who couldn't get it in there, but it looks like these videos are becoming popular with people who just like to add the cars in. And don't forget, if you add the cars in Facebook into that uh, Facebook group, uh, Pacific Coast JDM on Facebook, then you can chat with each other about the conditions of the cars and what they look like when it doesn't, when it's not specifically going to be a car that's on this video. Uh, maybe if it does make it onto this video, then good for you. Uh, actually, oh shoot, oh. Okay, well I made a bit of a mistake. Usually I make, I make the first car the thumbnail car. We made a mistake. I didn't organize them. I wanted the thumbnail to be one, two, three, four, the fourth one. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Okay, so this one's going to be the first one. Thumbnail. This is quite an interesting car. For those of you who don't know it, this is a Tommy Kyra ZZ. And I first heard about this car back in the Gran Turismo days. Tommy Kyra is a tuning company that tunes all sorts of Japanese cars, Skylines, and uh, Subaru Impreza's, and basically a whole bunch of different cars to give them a little bit more power, an aero kit, wheels, interior differences, that uh, that kind of thing, and then charge an extra $5,000 to $10,000 on top of the regular car price. They usually make their cars limited production, and they make about 150 to 500 different versions of each one of the cars, and they add a little bit of value to the cars, not an awful lot. They are a limited uh, edition, but Tommy Kyra tends to have body kits that were very 90s, so to speak, and uh, so they made their own car, and they thought that this was going to be a killer car, and then it turned out that they just didn't make very many of them. Maybe there was supply chain issues or something, and so they made 200 of these. It's called the Tommy Kyra ZZ, and it's pretty crazy. It uses a naturally aspirated individual throttle body version of the SR20 engine, so kind of weird they didn't use a turbo engine, but for a car that weighs only 650 kilograms, the 190 horsepower that they get out of this engine with the Tommy Kyra tune is probably really nice feeling in this car. So it's mid-engine, it's rear-wheel drive, it looks pretty insane, and with only 200 of these made, you've got to jump on these when they come up for auction, because you're not going to get many chances to buy one, and actually in the last month, this is the second one that's come through, so it's pretty uncommon. Okay, it looks like your typical kit car for the interior, or low volume production car. Look at that. <clears throat> so, uh, full space frame, and uh, removable roof. 
if you want to call it that, enough room for your helmet to fit inside here. That's pretty cool. I love the way that these look, and I love how they're sitting on small wheels, small body, super flared back end. And this was a one of my favorite cars in Gran Turismo 2. And I'm going to tell you a bit of a story. When I played that game, there was the ZZ and there was the ZZ2, right? The ZZ2 being the uh, more flashy version of it. So this car was intended to have a sequel called the ZZ2, and they actually never put it into production. So it was in the game, and you can drive it in the game, and the ZZ2 had an RB26 engine in it with 500 and something horsepower. Way different, way more powerful than this one. Uh, but then it turned out that Tommy Kyra sold the car to another manufacturer who ended up making a different car out of it. And so, kind of a, uh, a weird little history there. But it is a cool car. Let's take a look at the, ooh, the seats first. Here we go. And while you're looking at the seats, I'll translate the auction sheet here. So this is a 1997. They made the car for 10 years from 1990 to 2000. Tommy Kyra ZZ 2000cc engine, 45843 kilometers on here, five speed transmission, auxiliary four, interior and exterior C. The body's going to be full fiberglass, so you don't have to worry about dents on it, but there are problems with paint cracking on fiberglass. So we have paint cracks here, paint cracks here, here, and here. But with a car like this, it would certainly be worth it to repaint it. Probably you want to re repaint it into the original color. I've only actually seen these in three colors, black, red, and white. And so those may be the only three colors. I'm not too sure. Look at this. It's a five-digit odometer. Did not know that about this car. So it could have 145, but with a car like this, especially one with no roof, that already seems like a pretty high number for uh, comparable cars to this in Japan, uh, like this rarity of car. And a cracked windshield. I wonder what windshield they use for this. I know that they didn't use another car's chassis for it. They made their own. But the windshield might come from another car. And one windshield wiper. I think it's so cool. Okay, and uh, interior dirty wear and has rip. You can kind of see the rip here in the seat. And uh, otherwise it doesn't have door cards. It doesn't have interior liner or carpeting. So it's a pretty simple car to restore if you wanted to do that. But you, by the looks of it, you don't really need to restore it in order to have a nice car. Seat ripped, various scratches and dents. So, oh, weird. Oh, it has a 17-digit VIN number with an S at the beginning. That means that this car was made in England. I did not know that. Look at this engine. That is so cool. I would love to try <laughs> something like this. Just the, the, the idea of an SR20 with individual throttle bodies is a, really appealing to me. Okay, so as for price, it's really hard. When you get to the railroad cars like this, it gets harder to guess the price. I got a guess on this one that it'll probably go for about 2.7 billion. And so on to the next one here it's from Zay Wang sent in this one, and have to say it's quite an interesting little vehicle here. So this is a, a, a K truck. Basically, it's just a work truck here in Japan. They are very common. They're everywhere in Japan if you've ever been here. But usually they're not modified to look cool because they're just a work vehicle. And this one, so this one has flares on it, uh, front bumper, spoiler, side skirts, and uh, some pretty crazy stretched tires on these classic wheels on there. Very cool looking truck, <laughs> tiny little exhaust, pretty funny. And then interior, nothing special done to it. It is. Uh, Quite a cool looking vehicle. I have to say though, I'm not a big fan of these K-Trucks in the way that they drive. Um, this one is a five-speed manual, but they're really just industrial vehicles and there's not, uh, they're not made to be good driving vehicles. They're made to be cheap and useful. And so the bed sides flip down on all three corners. You can get a dump truck version of them. You can even get like a gas tanks in the back like 500 liter gas tanks if you want to use it for a mobile gas filling thing you can get refrigerated truck versions and you can get lift up like there's a scissor lift so the whole bed can go up and down and so a bunch of different options on there almost all of them like 95 percent of them are just the regular truck version this one here is just a stylish version of it that you probably don't want to use for industrial purposes because you're going to scratch up that paint this one's a 1994 and comes with a 660cc K engine. That's like 38 horsepower or something like that, because it does—it's not turbo or anything. Uh, comes a, uh, color changed to black. Auction grade 3.5 interior B, exterior B. 
uh, SSR Mark III 14-inch wheels. 14 is pretty big considering they come stock with 12s. So that's cool. <coughs> Pardon me. Has been lowered. Uh, has a bunch of uh, things. Not really um, anything other than what I've already mentioned. AC and manual transmission. That's a nice little combination to get because a lot of the manual transmission ones don't have the AC. Usually the AC only comes with the automatic. So it's a nice little option uh, selection there. U3 on the roof, underside surface rust, taillights cloudy, steering wheel peeling, bed and side scratched and dented, headlights on the front are cloudy, and headliner has been modified. Okay, so uh, not an awful lot to talk about here. I think this one will probably go for about 270000 which is more than the regular uh, ones sell for, but it's stylish and cool looking, so that's why, in my opinion. All right, so the next one, also by Zay Wang. He sent in this one. It is a super rare car to find in the Japanese auctions, but you know, in Japan, you can import cars from any country and you can drive them on the road. And so if there's any car that you want to get, Japan is a good market to buy them from because uh, usually mileage on cars here is rather low compared to other countries and people in Japan take care of their specialty vehicles like this very well. Okay, so this is a, obviously it's a DeLorean. It's the... Uh, he says, back to the future, was his comment on this one. And so it looks like it has the original wheels. Kind of interesting. I didn't know that it was a four-bolt pattern on the wheels of this car. Um, very strange. Okay, so the body on this is, in case you don't know, like a lot of the viewers on these videos are going to be young enough that this car wasn't part of their life. The year of this one is 19. It says 1993. It's actually not. Uh, 93 would have been the year that it was imported here into Japan. I don't know what years these were made. I think 80... Uh, I don't know. Andrew, do you know when the DeLoreans were made? Yeah. Okay, I don't know because it's an American car. And I don't know anything about American cars, but I'm going to say that it was probably 1982 to 1986 or something like that. And so uh, in my childhood, it was a, a very popular car, obviously Back to the Future, but it also has a very 80s look to it with the tail lights on here and the cool spaceship-like body. It's a pretty sweet-looking car. Performance-wise, they're not very good. Uh, they're very heavy because of the stainless steel body, and they don't have a very fast engine in them, from what I've heard. <coughs> I've never actually driven one. So 2.8 liter engine, automatic transmission, auxiliary 4, interior B, exterior B, uh, exterior color, stainless. Yeah, so it, there's no paint on the body. And I don't think that... So a stainless steel isn't supposed to rust, but eventually it can. Oh, here we go. So this one's a 1981 model year, so at least back to 1981. Purchased from user. Um, Gullwing door. Original 15-inch wheels. Floor mats. Um... Pirelli tires, okay. Aftermarket portable Navi is in here, has extra speakers, DMC Japan. This is a, an official DMG, DMC Japan car. That's really weird that it's a 1981, but imported in J Japan in 1993, but it's still an official DMC Japan car. Hmm. Or it says uh, warranty papers or, or uh, paperwork from DMC Japan. So maybe they had this thing where they would import the cars and refresh them or something. I don't know. Uh, oil leaked. Interior liner is ripped. Headliner is coming off. Body looks to be pretty perfect. And I don't know the value of the DeLoreans, and so I'm just going to be wrong if I guess. The starting price here is $4.8 million. Uh, maybe uh, $7 million? Don't know. I, I have never in my life looked up the prices of DeLoreans. And a car like this would be roughly the same value anywhere in the world because this is the category of car that would be a world car. No matter where you sell this car in the world, there's a good chance that a buyer could be coming from any country with the intention to import it into that country. And so for that reason, prices tend to be the same across the world for certain categories of cars, this being one of them. Okay, so on to the next one. Thank you, Zane, for sending that one in. And we got this. And this one is really exciting because we just bought one of these, my first one ever. And so if this looks like a hack job, uh, it's not surprising, but this is an official Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9 with a station wagon back end on it. And they only made this for the Evo 9, not for the Evo 7, 8, or 10. 
And I have to say, Mitsubishi, I'm really happy that you did this, especially a company that, although a pretty rich company, a company that's not really doing that well in terms of sales and profit per sale and uh, various other things. Mitsubishi makes some good cars, but most of their cars are kind of like, you know, fifth or sixth place in the market compared to their competitors, all except for the Lancer Evolution, which is, in my opinion, ahead of the competition. Now, uh, now that I've said that, the Subaru guys are going to come at me, but uh, I think that is true, at least up until the uh, Evo 9. Okay, so this one, so the one that we bought was an automatic. This one's also also an automatic. You can get them in manual. I think that they are a six-speed manual, but I could be wrong about that. And then you're going to see a big price difference between the automatics and the manuals, obviously. I think most of these station wagons are autos. 2005 Lancer Wagon Evolution GTA auction rate RA interior C exterior D 75 726 kilometers on it original blue color first time at auction the navy doesn't work on it rear side member dented underside surface rust headliner is dirty interior is dirty dashboard glue marks on it seat cigarette burn and wear both of them medium steering wheel scratched scratches uh, aftermarket wheels on it and a pretty nice looking aftermarket wheel. I'd like to see what this car looks like in person. In these pictures, the blue doesn't really come out appealing looking, but I think in person it might be different. It is pretty dirty. You can see all that dust on the roof and around the hood here. Okay, and Bill Steen's suspension on it. It doesn't say if it's aftermarket or not, but judging by the height, I think it is aftermarket Bill Steen suspension. And the interior is the same as the uh, as the regular Evos, as far as I know. I will know in a few days because we do have one coming in, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, love the Lancers, love station wagons more than I should, and uh, I think just a, an overall cool car. Price for this one, let's see, mileage is reasonable for, well, reasonable to the high side for Japanese cars, and then the body here looks like it's kind of 5 out of 10, a lot of medium dents in it here and there, and uh, let's see, starting price of 200 bones. Uh, price. Uh, I'm gonna say 320,000 yen on this one. That's my guess. Uh, that seems low, but 320 is what I'll go for. Okay, on to the next one by uh, Raymond Liang. Sent in this. This is a Toyota V12 Century. It's kind of like Bentley or Rolls Royce, but not quite as high. More like a Japanese taste version of those cars and this has been getting a little bit of press recently because Toyota just showed a new version of this car at the Tokyo Auto Show this year and that's a big deal because this car started in the 60s and has only ever had two generations so far and so kind of crazy they did have like a facial refresh in one of those generations but the generation lasted like 20 years so pretty crazy this is a second gen version they came with toyota's v12 engine and it which is a five liter engine officially puts out 280 horsepower i don't know how much it actually is in real life 2005 century 102 200 kilometers auction rate 3.5 interior d exterior d which is really weird these uh so these centuries are almost always uh, cars that the chauffeur drives the owner in and usually has very low mileage on them because they're just not used that often. This one has very high mileage for a century and has a very bad body for a century. Think about it this way. This is the most expensive car that you can buy from Toyota by far and yet you buy these in order to kind of be cool in an expensive car but if it's in bad condition that doesn't work so you've spent all your money not looking cool in a car that's all dinged up and so it's about time that they sold this car probably another thing about these is they depreciate in value very very quickly because if you if you're going to be the guy that wants to drive around in the really expensive car you don't look that cool once your car is you know six or ten or fifteen years old and so this one here is now 12 years old it's kind of not cool anymore and so because of that the price has gone down big time same thing happens in Japan with S-Class and 7 Series, but maybe even more so for these ones. I don't know. Windshield is cracked. Um, that's not necessarily it, but it says X1 on here. Exterior has some uh, shallow scratches in various areas there. Console has lots of glue on it. That's kind of weird. 
The seat is ripped, medium and saggy. The interior has scratches. Steering wheel wear, shift knob wear, mirrors scratched, and um, a pretty bad body. Uh, I would say you're probably looking at about five, six hundred thousand yen on this one. That's going to be my guess. <laughs> I'm laughing because I think that's probably going to be wrong. Okay, uh, that one. Thank you, for Raymond, for sending that one in. He, Raymond says, "Why buy a Rolls Royce or Bentley if you can own an, uh, the only Japanese V12?" Which is true, as far as I know, there are no other Japanese manufacturers that ever made a V12. And funny of Toyota, they probably lost so much money on this car because to manufacture or to like to make a V12 takes a lot of engineering and if you're only going to put it in a limited production expensive car then you're not going to make your money back on that and so it is a shame that they never put it into something else as well okay on to the the next one here we got Perry Chapel sent in this one here at first glance it just looks like another 911 but it is a little something special ooh look at that interior ah uh, that's a no thank you for me Maybe the camera makes it look different than it does in real life, but that looks like that looks like vomit on a platter to me. Okay, so this <laughs> nice blurry picture there from the auction. Thank you guys. This is a 993 version of the 911, but it's the Carrera S version. And what the Carrera S is is it's a limited production version of the regular rear wheel drive version of the 911 with the turbo body on it. So the turbo is blistered fenders front and rear and cooler looking. And so you get all the cool looks, but then you get the just the regular non-turbo engine. And because of the r rarity of these, they tend to sell for a really high price. I'm not sure if these sell for more than the turbo ones do, but it might be close just due to the rarity. 911 owners uh, care very much about production numbers and colors, you know, how many of them came in this color. You could get a lot of uh, crazy customizations direct from uh, from Porsche. So, for example, this interior may be the owner's preference, and he wanted it that way, and so they, they custom-built the car that way for him. But purple with red or kind of a pale red-ish color, yuck for me. <clears throat> Okay, so the 993 is the 911 that seems to be the most expensive classic one. It's the last time that they had an air-cooled engine. It's a 3.6 liter, which is pretty big for those engines. I think they went up to 4 liters at the very highest, but uh, for the air-cooled ones, I think 3.6 is maybe the biggest. Man, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody out there in the world of uh, Googles can Google that and post it in the comments. Original purple paint, 133, 934 kilometers on here. I tried to find out the production numbers for these, but I couldn't find anything. I only found that in the U.S. they made 1,800 of them. For the rest of the world, I don't know. Auction grade 4, interior B. Condition seems to be pretty good. People in Japan keep their 911s in good condition. And uh, this is very important, too, because the best place in the world to buy the 911s from is definitely Japan, where mileage is always very low. 911s are great cars, and they're kind of a super car that you can live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And so in many countries, people do daily these cars. And so you see a lot of really high mileage on the 911s. Uh, here in Japan, 133, 934 is quite high compared to most of them here. But the condition seems to be really good despite the high mileage. And so that type of car can typically sell for a really decent price. When you have higher mileage but great condition, then you can get all the benefits of having a really good condition car, but not pay as much because the mileage is just a little bit higher. Okay, looking over it here, it's aftermarket suspension. Door mirrors uh, are painted different color. Yeah, they're silver. That's weird. And underside scratched and dented. Uh, this one, probably see this one go for about 7 million yen. That's going to be my guess. Okay. Oh, oh no. How can I fix that? <laughs> History. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I, I don't know what just happened there. Uh, everything's everything's broken now. I went and, uh, and erased one of them. So one of them was sent in by Jalmari Rai Palina. I'm sorry, you had an RX-7 that was really sweet, and I just went and erased it. And so we can't 
uh, Andrew's pressing keyboard stuff here. There it is. Thank you, Andrew. He does the computer stuff, so he's uh, cool now. Uh, okay, RX7 here, and uh, Jalmari says if this if this has rebuild recently done, it is going to be a pretty sweet deal. If my Japanese hacking skills are correct, it's single turbo conversion with HKS, FCON, RE, Amemia, body kit, and front mount intercooler. And so this is a 1992, so it's importable to the U.S. And you can bet all the people in the U.S. are drooling over this car. Funny thing, this is coming up uh, today. Yeah, it's coming up today. Eighth, yep. We didn't get any uh, bids on this one, which is a little bit strange. I, I did translate it for multiple customers, but nobody came in with a bid on it, which is a little bit strange. Uh, 1992 looks awesome. Has parts you can only get in Japan, like the body kit, I believe. And maybe I don't think they make the kit outside of Japan or make it available. Big GT wing. FDs look cool. They're one of the cars that looks great stock, but also looks really good modified. And I can't say that that's really the case in all the cars. Usually I have a preference one way or another, but I could... Well, this is a little bit too flashy for me being a grandpa now. Not officially, but uh, in my mind I feel like I am. Auction grade R small. Interior C, exterior C. Unknown mileage on it. Color change to red. I guess these things are, are what's going to keep people away from the car. But uh, yeah, it has a T04R big single turbo wastegate. Um, what else do we have? GT Wing carbon lip spoiler, aero hood on it, RE Amabia full aero kit, HKS FCON V Pro computer on there. Okay, good Japanese, Jalmari. I wonder what he means by hacking. I wonder if it was like uh, one of those programs that you can use your smartphone to read the stuff. But this writing is usually too messy to read with those anyway. Okay, aftermarket gauge panels put in so the mileage is unknown. Seat is saggy, ripped, and cigarette burn. Dashboard has screw holes in it. Rear seat is missing. Uh, trunk mat is missing. Roll cage installed into it. Right front inner panel dented, core support bent. Right front, uh, front cross member dented and modified. Oil leak, various scratches, dents, and scuffs on it. Color change, full body paint wave, paint peeling uh, in various areas right here, and right here, and right here. And battery has been relocated. Okay, so a lot of damage, but still pretty flashy looking. This kind of car would absolutely attract people to come take a look at it, at the very least. It's the kind of car that... If you were to buy this for the intention of reselling, then whoever you sell it to is going to need to know that this is a fixer-upper style car, but they may be into it, you know, with the parts that it has. I think it's still going to sell for a high price. I think it'll sell for more than I consider it to be worth, which is usually the case when you get really cool-looking cars, because the people who like cool cars generally tend to make excuses as to why they think it's worth it to get it, uh, in my opinion. And so I think that we'll see this one go for about 1.5 million yen, uh, which seems pretty expensive to me. Okay, on to the next one before I lose my voice completely here. This is uh, <coughs> <excuse me. laughs> sent in by Brandon Decker. He says, Mazda AZ off-road. This looks like it would be interesting, to say the least, if you were to take it off-road. And he is right. This is a uh, Suzuki Jimny rebadged to Mazda. And so it's basically not a Mazda at all. Uh, and this is, the Jimny is the Japanese version of the Samurai. But this is the current model of it. And I think that uh, Suzuki is going to replace it because they've been using this generation of it for more than 15 years now. And so it's the type of car, just like the Jeep Wrangler, you don't need to change it that often because it still suits its purpose. But uh, it is nice to get a new, clean-looking version of it every once in a while. And Suzuki's been leaving this one kind of on the end of the branch for a very long time. This one's a Mazda one, though. I think these ones are much rarer, but it, you don't get any extra value from that rarity because it's basically the same thing, just with a different badge on it. AZ Off-Road XC version, 660cc engine in it. I think it's a K6A. Don't know. 100, wow, 21 kilometers and five-speed manual. That's really high mileage for one of these. Auction grade, because they're not that comfortable to drive in. So, wow, somebody has nerves of steel. 
Auxiliary three interior C condition of it. Let's see core support across the member have corrosion holes in it. Lovely. Okay, underside has corrosion that has been painted over. Another lovely thing. Front inner panel. Uh, front inner panel entire lower section corrosion repairs have been done. So yeah, so it looks like this car is pretty much done. It looks cool. It would be fun to buy this, take it off-roading, and then just sell it back to auction. And you probably get about the same price for it because you're not going to get a lot for this. I believe that this will only sell. It, good chance it's going to go unsold because it sounds like a lot of problems with it. Starting price is 30,000 yen, which is basically 300 bucks. I can see this, <coughs> excuse me, probably only selling for about 40,000 yen, if that. Okay, and on to the last one here from Bill Courtney. Bill says, crown, crown diesel wagon with five on the tree, 286,000 kilometers so far. By the way, don't smoke in there. And that's in reference to the no smoking sign on the dashboard. <laughs> if one wanted to be sneaky, you could put these stickers on all the cars you sell at auction, no matter if they've been smoked in or not, and probably raise up the price because... Japanese love smoking in, in cars compared to, I guess, Canada, where I come from, where smoking is just not as popular. Okay, so Crown Wagon. I gotta, the reason why I put this one in here, it's not really a flashy car. I love the Crown, and I love station wagons, and so the Crown Wagon, obviously, is a neat, is a neat car. I think it's kind of plain-looking, kind of ugly-looking, but I tried to buy one of these for our inventory about two weeks ago and got slammed big time. I bid 200,000 yen on it, and I thought I had a good shot. It ended up selling for 550,000 yen. So it's very uncommon for me to be that far off on bids I place for myself. And so that's really weird. The reason why I wanted it so badly is they, not this one, but the one I was bidding on was also a diesel. Uh, it has rear-facing seats that pop out of the trunk. And it's very cool. Mercedes-Benz also does this with their wagons of this generation. And I think that that's such a cool idea to have a seven-seater with rear-facing seats. When I was little, I used to sit in the back cargo area of my mom's station wagon. Of course, there were no seat belts then, but this is back in the early 80s, and safety wasn't a thing yet. Either that, or my mom didn't like me very much and wanted to see. To, she would hit the brakes really hard to make sure that uh, the higher chances of uh, getting rear-ended. Uh, anyways, bench seat, very cool. And then uh, Bill says five on the tree so you shift the gears here that's what he's referring to as the tree and so really weird to shift gears on there and uh, yeah the engine in this is the Hilux truck engine it's the same as the Hilux pickup the diesel one so really cool it's like you're driving a truck diesel brash and noisy engine not that great a fuel economy for a diesel but you know, much better than gasoline. You get all that torque, and it's a very reliable engine. 285, 737. It's probably not that high of mileage. I think that it with proper maintenance, you can go up to 500 or 600,000 clicks with this car. And fender mirrors. And so this might be a good car for somebody to pick up. Let's see the condition. We got a little bit of uh, mild corrosion here and here. It is a 1987. Yeah, 1987, so it is pretty old. Battery needs to be replaced. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, white smoke. That's the thing about this engine, too. This is a non-turbo version of the engine, too, so that's really uncommon. These engines have an aluminum head on them, an aluminum head plus an iron block plus the pressures of a diesel. It can, If your coolant system is a little bit weak, you're going to have problems with that. And so if you do drive one of these, you you uh, keep your coolant system in good shape. You keep your radiator free-flowing. Make sure you don't have gribblies in there. And then it can last a really long time. If it falls down, then you get the white smoke, and that means a blown head gasket. Uh, you don't know if it would be worth it to buy this with the intention of replacing the head gasket. So I, I bet this one's going to be ultra cheap. High mileage, engine that needs work, and a body that's kind of a, a 4 out of 10 by the looks of it. So starting price, 100 bucks, uh, 80,000 yen is going to be my guess. Oh, that's that's disgusting inside. Blah, it's missing the rear seats too. More cargo room though. Okay, I'm going to change my price on this one and then go down to 40,000 yen now. It looks worse inside than uh, I thought that it would. Front looks okay. And don't forget, there's no smoking.
Okay, and that's the last one, so we're going to see you guys again next week. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye now.